Hey guys, I thought I would make a quick video to answer some of your questions. They've been piling up on my videos lately and I sometimes don't have time to answer them all, but I thought if I could take a few at a time, I could make a video and share the answers with everyone. So we're gonna start with uh, my most recent video upload was the Soldered Contemporary Ring Project. And let's see, Teresa asks, where do you purchase liquid flex? I think she meant liquid flux, not flex, but that's okay. Um, Teresa, I list all of the materials and all of the tools that I use in the description below every project. Um, if there is a time when you do not see something in the description or I have it, you know, blank after that item, that means the item might be something that's really kind of obscure, like maybe a bead that I've had for a long time that, you know, that's a one of a kind and, or I, you know, don't know where to direct you to get that. Um, that's why I wouldn't have it, but it is in the description and I will also put it below in this description for this video too, so you can find that. Um, one thing that I usually don't uh, list in a description is where I get wire. And the reason for that is I usually recommend you go to a jewelry supply, like a wholesaler, and something that is specific for jewelry makers. That way you know what you're getting. I do not like buying jewelry wire for soldering at big box craft stores. And the reason behind that is a lot of times you can find little spools of say silver wire or some type of silverish wire and it'll say tarnish resistant or specially coated and you do not want to use that for soldering. A lot of those are coated with plastic and you know I've tried it myself you know, unbeknownst to me, I bought this craft wire and I took it to my workshop and I put my hot soldering iron against it, put a little flux on it and it started to bubble <laughs> and I could see plastic melting on the wire and wow, you don't wanna breathe that in. You don't wanna mess around with that. Um, if you do try to melt it off with a soldering iron, it's gonna take forever and who knows what kind of poisonous gas you could be releasing by putting heat to that. So yeah, you don't wanna mess around with any of those kinds of wires. So. That's one thing I recommend is getting your wire from a jewelry supply store. Um, there's plenty of catalogs and places online that are specifically supplies for jewelry makers. Um, one thing that I can recommend is, and I mentioned it in that video, copper wire you can get at hardware stores. And I have a large hardware store near me and I can go to a wall where they have all these different sizes and tell them what length I want and they pull down these big spools and they'll, you know, 10 feet of this or five feet of this or whatever and you're paying so much less for copper wire buying it from a hardware store usually than you are from a jewelry supply store. And you know, you can compare those prices and do a little sleuthing yourself and figure that out. But you can also, by copper wire that's like electrician's wire that has insulation on it. It has like a plastic coating. And all you need to do is get a wire stripper tool. And I'm gonna talk about that in another video, but let's move on to another question. Okay, in the same project of the contemporary wire ring, Emily asks, what do you use in the end to polish, please? And what I use on a black patina is I use a polish which is called stained glass finishing compound. And I will have to take a look around and see if I can find a link for that if it's still sold under that name or what a comparable item would be. And I believe it's Caranuba Wax. And that is made was made, I guess, for the stained glass industry for use with black patina. And by putting that on and buffing it in and then cleaning it off with a clean rag, you get a beautiful black luster. And it's really unlike anything else. It's great, you know, for that kind of jewelry. For anything with a black patina, it works wonderfully. So that's what I use for that. Stained glass finishing compound, Caranuba wax, um, something of that sort. Okay, let's do another question. Okay, Deb Deb said, this looks like fun and possibly something that I can make. I've been afraid to solder, so this will be a gentle introduction. Where do you purchase the patina liquid? Can you make this ring in a variety of colors? First of all, okay, don't be afraid to solder. There's no open flame and there's no canisters of dangerous gases or anything like that. Um, it might seem intimidating at the very beginning, at the very start, because a lot of things before you've tried them can seem intimidating. But once you try it, I promise, with a little bit of practice, you're really gonna like it. So 
check below in the descriptions to see where I, you know, purchase the items or where you can purchase the items. I always put links if I can and so that you can, you know, find the same products that I use. And I'm not sponsored by any products. They're just things that I like. So yeah, um, different colors. Uh, you can do different finishes, sure. You could do it in silver. You could do a copper patina. You could use copper wire with a copper patina where you solder it. And uh, that would make that silver solder disappear and turn copper. And I showed that technique in another video that I have, which is the copper bezel. And I'll put a link to that below. So check that out too. That's more of an intermediate to advanced kind of soldering project, but it's, it's pretty awesome. So yes, definitely the patina check below don't you know be intimidated about trying you know you just have to do it you know there's so many things that i want to try too in like different kinds of art and crafts and jewelry and i think well you know when i get to it i'm so busy doing this or maybe i'm like i don't know you know where to start but you know i'm gonna tell you like if you watch my videos, I will tell you like what you need <laughs> and it's not hard and you just have to practice a little bit and I say go for it and I think you're going to have, you know, a great time with it and you know, let us know. Let me know how it goes. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear about your journey with soldering and let's see if I can do one more question. Okay, from my video stamped soldered pendants, which I put up about a week ago. Happy March, by the way. I am so happy, it's almost springtime. <laughs> Judy commented, why do you solder on paper? And you know, that's a good question. And I've soldered on all different types of surfaces. I have the plastic soldering mats that you can buy at craft stores and jewelry supply catalogs. I've soldered on a big wooden, you know, workbench. I have, um, uh, what are they called, like soldering bricks that you can solder on. Um, I always solder on a fireproof surface on top of my table, but I put a piece of paper down underneath that project because I was using liquid flux. And flux is an acid. Flux can be drippy. You can see a lot of times when I'm applying it with a flux brush, how it's you know dripping around my project. Once you put the tip of your soldering iron onto the metal that has flux on it, it's going to bubble a little bit, it might splatter. And that's what I do. I use that paper to catch that splatter. Once in a while you'll see it singes a little bit because you know the metal's very hot on it, but I never put my soldering iron near the paper. I use a soldering iron stand. When I'm using both of my hands and I'm not holding a soldering iron, my soldering iron is off to the side in a stand that is safe and away from any, you know, anything that can start on fire. But you know, I always say in my videos too, if you don't have um, a fire extinguisher in your house, you know, you should get one. And I say that just for the sake of safety. At a hardware store, like $20 or so, you can get a fire extinguisher, just a small one. And whether you do crafts or jewelry or soldering or not, it's a great thing to have. So yes, uh, safety number one, you know, always wear safety glasses, have a mask, have, you know, all the things that you need, well ventilated area. So I hope that answered your question. And then I guess that's about it for now. I will be back again with some more questions in a couple weeks maybe. So let's take a quick look at just a couple of the most recent projects that I put up on my YouTube channel. And this one is the soldered spring branch. It's like just yellow, like little crystals as flowers. And you know, like I say, happy March. I can't wait for spring, but this is what it looks like. It's so pretty. And the next one that I did with these turquoise colored chunky beads, I love this. This is so cool. And you can use all different color beads for it. You can see that I used four, but you know, like I say in the video, you can use three, you can use, you know, more or less, whatever, but that's what that looks like. And I put them on like a 22, 24 inch chain. And um, you know, you can always put them on a longer chain if you want. And let's see, oh, you know, someone, this is why I said about the Facebook page. Um, somebody has been commenting, one or two people, where can I get that project? And when I share my YouTube video, they say, where can I buy that? Is it in your Etsy shop? These are just items that I make to make the videos. They're not something that I really sell, but what I think I'm gonna do is after I do the video, I think I'll eventually list them um, not in my Etsy shop. I think I will put them on my website, laurabethlove.com. It's just my name.com and I can put them there for sale. So if anybody likes the project and they really want the original, you can check that out and you can buy that. It's gonna take me a little while to get those up there, but eventually after I finish each project, you'll find it on that, you know, on laurabethlove.com. And then, 
you know, one last thing. This is just a little sneak peek. This is the next video I have coming up and it's really cool. And well, that's just a sneak peek. So make sure you come back Friday, every Friday, I promise a new video, sometimes in between. And you know, thanks for joining me. Keep those questions coming. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see, you know, maybe some kind of you know, project, which whether it's an art project or a jewelry project, let me know and we'll see what we can do. So have a great week and I'll see you next time.